The presence of God is synonymous with God's face. The term used for presence in the Bible is often panim or pane. It means face or faces, as in the face of a person. David says, Psalm 21.6, For you make him most blessed forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. There are many other verses in the Bible that speak to God's face bringing gladness, salvation, peace, and delight to those who seek it. As we consider the face of God as a metaphor for his presence, we must call to mind that God is omnipresent. This means we can find him wherever we seek him. We do not need to be in a tabernacle, temple, or church. We do not need to wait on any specific day. We are told, Isaiah 55, 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Wherever we are and wherever we choose to seek the presence of the Lord, we can find him. This is the dispensation when God is nearest to us. All we need to do is to seek his presence. James 4, 8 cajoles us to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is to experience God in a way that takes intentionality. As I said earlier, the face of God brings blessed and benevolent benefits to those who seek it. Numbers 6, 25 through 6 states, The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. John Piper states, these are invitations into the fuller, more intense, more certain, more joyful, more satisfying, more transforming experience of the reality of God. As we think about the above benefits, expressions, and experiences of the presence of God, how do we seek His presence and draw near to Him? Fall in love with Him. Proverbs 8.17 I love those who love me, and those who seek me, find me. Love will always move the heart of the lover and the beloved towards each other. The same is true for our relationship with God. The first thing we must do to draw near to Him is to accept God's love for us, and the second is to fall in love with Him. If we fail to accept the love that God has poured out on us by sending His Son to die for us so that those of us who were His enemy can be brought near to Him, we will never be able to seek His presence. But we must also love God in return, and the cycle of love between us and God will never be broken. Falling in love with God is not just an emotive reality, but one that involves our intellect. We must reflect on the love of God that was demonstrated to us. Greater love has no man than this that he would lay down his life for a friend. God's love for us goes higher than the mountains, deeper than the oceans, and wider than the heavens above. His love for us spans the expanses of the universe. If we think about God's love for us as the superlative of all expressions of love, we will inevitably fall in love with Him. This is the genius of seeking God's presence. Worship God. John 4.23 Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. As we begin to seek God's presence by falling in love with Him, we must move into worship. Richard Foster posits, Worship is our response to the overtures of love from the heart of the Father. This correlation between God's love that is directed towards us and the evocation of worship in us is inevitable. In the arena of worship, the seeking is mutual. This is the best adventure of the soul that is seeking the presence or face of God because God is also seeking worshipers who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. We may engage hymns, psalms, or spiritual songs in our worship, but the best thing to do is to simply allow the spirit of the lover to have sweet communion with our spirits. That is worship. When spirit touches spirit, God comes near to our hearts when we surrender to Him in pure and joyous worship. Deuteronomy 4.29 But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. We must never love or worship God half-heartedly. In the same way, God doesn't reward the double-minded man. He will not be found by the half-hearted lover or worship. In our pursuit of God, we must not allow anything to divide our focus or steal our gaze from His face. We must put our all into the chase, and then we will find Him. Remember, we are not just going after God's omnipresence, but we are seeking to engage God in the manifestation of His expressed attention. Piper recounts and expands on these penned words of the psalmist. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. 
That doesn't mean that God traveled some distance. It means He is near in the sense that He exerts His influence for our good in special ways and causes us to experience the sweetness of His reality in special ways. What an awesome promise from God that when we seek Him with all our heart and remain undivided in our emotions, we will find His influence for our good and experience the sweetness of His face. I exhort you as David exhorted Solomon to wholeheartedly chase after the face of God. 1 Chronicles 28.9 states, And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind, for the Lord searches every heart and understands every every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Seek him continually. First Chronicles 1611. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. The final thought I want to leave you with is this. Never get weary of seeking God's presence. Getting into the presence of God, experiencing Him working in your life, or having His manifested joy, peace, and favor is not a destination that we get to. Then stop doing what we did to get there. We must keep seeking Him because His ways are higher than our ways, and we are never able to fully search the depths of His love or the splendor of His face. We must constantly create pangs of hunger and thirst after God. This guarantees more of God being poured out in us. This will not happen automatically. We must be intentional about entertaining the inner longings to get more of who God is and to see His face ever the more. Do not fail or become faint. The face of God is always favorable to those who are His children. His face brings salvation. Psalm 8019. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us, cause your face to shine upon us, and we will be saved. His face brings the light of His countenance and is the expression of His grace and loving kindness. Psalm 31:16. Make your face to shine upon your servant. Save ye in your loving kindness. Psalm 4, 6. Many are saying, Who will show us any good? Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Seeking the Lord with all our hearts is the one guaranteed way of living a fulfilled life. The Lord is the giver of life. Life comes from Him and Him alone. Revelation 1.18 I am He that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. He is the living one. And we want life. We need to seek Him. However, it is a hard attempt because human nature or the flesh gets into the way. The flesh tries to seek its good in its way first. Even when we desire to do what is right, the motivation of the flesh is always self-centered. This is why we need to make conscious effort to deny the flesh and its desires and to seek the Lord with all our heart. And for us to do so, we need to live a life that is in this spirit. Humans have a body, a soul, and a spirit. With the body, a human relates themselves to the physical world. With the soul, a person relates themselves with the living world of creatures. But with the spirit, a person can relate himself to God, who is the ultimate spirit. Now, seeking the Lord with all your heart implies that you are after him with all your heart. Getting to know him is your primary objective. Seeking his face is your number one desire. His presence is where you desire to be at all times. As believers, we grossly misunderstand what the Bible meant in Deuteronomy 4.29, where it states, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him, if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. We underestimate that term, with all your heart and with all your soul. To find God, it cannot be a half-hearted attempt. You will have to throw absolutely everything that you have in you to seek him. Seeking the Lord is a continuous process in which both the New and Old Testament illustrate as a setting of the heart and mind on the Lord. It is a deliberate and intentional fixing of our heart's affection and mind's attention on Almighty God. 1 Chronicles 22.19 Now set your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Also Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2 explains what it means to seek the Lord. If then you raised with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. You see, seek God is a deliberate choice. It is a deliberate choice to direct our hearts and minds toward God. It is what Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians 3.5 prayed for the church. Now may the Lord direct your heart into the love of God and into the patience of Jesus Christ. Thus, it is a mindful and intentional attempt on our part. 
Nevertheless, the effort and ability to seek the Lord comes from Him.